Hello, good morning, dear viewers. Um, I just recorded one hour and 15 minutes of video on this cam. It's an old digital camera. Um, it is the only one that I can get to stream um, the recorded video from the camera to my hard drive. So, and also it's got a really great, a really great microphone. The camera I am filming with now, um, I think, has a microphone that creates too much noise in the background. And I haven't heard any complaints about it, but it annoys me. <laughs> heard a lot of people saying you um, um, um a lot. Yes, I do, because I'm doing so many things at the same time. I am talking to you, I'm focusing on the thing that I'm doing, and something you're probably not aware of. All the time while I'm filming, I am checking in the little screen of my camera, like you find here, I am checking to see whether things are going all right. So yes, I am um, a lot. And English is not my mother tongue. My English is good, but you know, it does take me some time to process my thoughts sometimes. So sorry about the ums, although I really like reading yesterday that somebody said, I like your ums, they're charming. <laughs> So that really made my day. Anyway, I swatched this beautiful Schminky Horodam color chart that they sent me. And I did that for you, talking to you about the colors. And I was being really enthusiastic. And I, well, it was a really great video. But I found out that with this camera, when I zoomed in to show you very clearly what I was doing, it went out of focus and I couldn't see it on this screen and even though it was streaming to a hard drive I couldn't see it in the program in the software that I'm working with because there there is this sort of preliminary preview mode and that is not detailed enough to only very small so I haven't seen it and I feel gutted about it because I wanted to share so much with you the experience of swatching this. So after this I will be swatching the full 100 tube Sennelier set and um, I'm glad it happened with this small color chart because I would have feel I would have felt horrible had it happened to the Sennelier and I would have done it again but as you can see um, I can't do it again I'm sorry, I just don't have the time to do that. So I figured I would just tell you a little bit about this paint. Right, um, Schminky also sent me the new leaflet, the new booklet, I have to say, because it's not a leaflet. It's a really good um, book with some good reference about the pigments they've used. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. It replaces the old uh, booklet that I had. And it is absolutely, I think, paramount that there are so many people asking me, Mandy, I want to move into artist grade paints. Which should I buy and what colors do you advise me to buy? Well, there are two things. One, I can't tell you if you have to move on to artist grade paints. It's a choice you have to make. Artist grade paints are very, very pricey. However, there is a great um, added value to the paint. So. You know, it's not um, only more expensive, but it's also got its advantages. However, that being said, every pigment has its own characteristics. And one pigment works great with another pigment, but works into mud with yet another pigment. So, one of the reasons I love Schminky is that they have this really beautiful booklet that I find absolutely fantastic because it does a few things for you especially for those who are starting out with artist great paints there is uh, quite a bit of um, explanation about the history which is not really relevant for painting there is quite some information about the pigments and about the paints and then and that is probably the most useful um, thing of them all is that there is a really good and rather uh, realistic um, color chart in here that I find much more reliable than any color chart out there on um, on screen because 
every screen calibration is different. So my screen will show a different red than yours will. And this is, is reasonably, well, it's never realistic, but it's, um, it's a good comparison between the colors. Um, but that's not even the most important thing. The most important thing is right here. Um, here are the colors. Here are the names of the colors. The stars indicate light fastness. Five stars being absolutely light fast. Color will never fade. This is white. Dull. No, it won't fade. Although that being said, I had a white paint that turned sort of grayish once. Um, then there is um, uh, signs to indicate the opacity. Um, the, the square. Um, dark square means opaque. Um, a white square it means um, that it's completely transparent and um, you know uh, half dark means it's semi opaque then there is a, a staining sign it's a little triangle here um, a dark triangle means it's um, uh, very staining so once it's on the paper and on your clothes keep that in mind it won't come off anymore then when it's really, um, then there is the half staining, so it's semi easy to lift back off your paper. And then there is here, a vermilion light is very easy to lift off the paper again. It's not very staining. The thing is, does it interest you? Well, once you get into artist grade paints, it should. I don't know all this by heart. Um, I am not a fact kind of person. I don't remember facts. So this booklet to me, whenever I buy new artist grade paint, this is where I'll go to. I have to confess that um, with these pigment names, um, it says PW6, it's a pigment name, you will find this indication on any brand of paint. That being said, so you can use it for other brands as well if they have the same pigments. But that being said, do buy schminky paints. I mean, if you get this booklet, then at least go and buy yourself some schminky paints to try because they're absolutely fantastic. They really, really are. And I think that if you use the booklet, you should use, you should use some paints as well. Um, people ask me, Mandy, what um, set should I buy, right? It's one of the questions I get asked most frequently. Well, the thing is, um, I can tell you the, the classic answer by um, any um, uh, paint, painting teachers. And I can say you should buy the 12 or the 24 and this and this and that color should be in it. Um, however, I always feel a bit um, burdened by saying that because knowing myself, I don't work in a classic way, period. I don't. I was never formally taught and I was never formally trained and I refuse to because I like what I'm doing and I know that there are people out there who like what I'm doing so what I would advise what I, what I would advise you to do if you're moving on from student grade paint to artist grade paints is to buy a set of 12 colors like this one it comes in this metal box and it's already quite pricey, but then at least you have some, this is, will be empty when you buy it. These colors won't be in it. But then at least you will be able to chuck in another 13 or even 14, I think one half pen will go in here. So you can add uh, 13 to 15 extra half pens or a couple of full pens of colors you love. And that is what I think I would do to buy a standard set and then some more. Um, as for the colors, um, what is also really great about this booklet is that um, there is a lot of information here. Um, like for instance, um, um, like here, 102, permanent Chinese white, cold, pure, light, fast, traditional zinc white with good white lightning power, slightly cold bluish nuance. Due to, due to transparency, the best mixing white. Well, this is sort of, I think, when you get to the point of moving on to an artist great paint, you will know that permanent Chinese white is a good mixing white. Um, 
but it's very important that when you move on to these paints that you know what what you're doing i think um because if you don't want to know if you don't want to get interested in this then maybe you don't really have to move on to artist grade paints i mean schminky talents and winter newton all have got really good um student grade paints van gogh um Cotman is really great and i think it's schminky academy if i'm correct they are fantastic paints um, and they all mix well together they're good and light fast they're beautifully vibrant and you know they they come at a much better value especially for art journaling i would say you don't really need these but that being said there is one reason why perhaps you would need this and that is because you love the colors I'm going to point out one color to you that you will never ever find in a student grade quality paint. That is the Brilliant Opera Rose. Um, Schminky says something about this paint which is kind of funny. <laughs> I had to laugh about it because it's true. Um, as you can see it's neon. I mean I, do, I hope my camera picks up on it really well. But here it is. It's incredibly neon and it says pure and brilliant not achievable by mixing without evaluation of light fastness which means that it's so incredibly poor in light fastness that no serious artist will ever use this for a museum piece or a commission because this will fade within weeks or days maybe even or well months and years at least um also this color won't reproduce very well so the only reason why I would use this is because I enjoy doing it, because I enjoy working with it and um, I would use it in my art journal where, you know, I often close it so um, there is less light that it will suffer from, although it will also just suffer from time. <laughs> this should include a column saying time fastness because this one will also fade um, due to time and not just to light. Um, but there are many, many more colours in, in the artist grade area than there are in student grade area. Although I have to say that if you mix the student grade paints well, then you, there will be very few colors you won't be able to mix. Um, but then again, you know, there are many people, um, I call them pigment fascists, who want to work with single pigment paints only. And you want to do that when you want to have maximum control. Because you, if, if you're really good at this, then you know exactly that this pigment goes really well together with that pigment and you will get this and that, and that effect. So um, then if you're like that, then you must really move on to artist grade paints. And if you're not, then just move on to artist grade paints when you see a colour you really love, basically. Okay. Now, I can't show you just watching anymore. I don't have time for that, but I will tell you a little bit about that. Um, the Rutil Yellow, that these are all the new colours that they issued this year, 2017. I found out they replaced a few of their old colours with these. And um, I also found out, um, to my joy, that they um, added a few colours that I like very, very much. Rutil Yellow is um, just like the Turner's Yellow, it's a semi-opaque yellow. It's it's a, a lighter and a darker version of it. And... Um, well, it's it's quite it's a quite beautiful colour. Um, I like to work with a combination of watercolour and gouache, so I hardly ever buy opaque colours. But this, these are semi-opaque colours that are really really nice, and um, they give a beautiful even finish. Then there is Queen Acridone Gold Hue, which I absolutely love, and it's it's just as beautiful. I showed the quinacridones by um, Core a little while ago and I was absolutely in love with them and I am absolutely in love with these and Schminky has more quinacridones. I don't know if they just changed the names or that they really have new pigments in their assortment but I really really love it. Um, and they, they, they almost all have great flow. There were a couple of colours that don't have um, like the transparent red deep didn't flow too well um, as the cobalt azure, um, but all the other colors, they, they, they flow beautifully. Um, colors that I really, really, really like. Um, I am always after really vibrant reds. And in this case, it's the 341 geranium red. And I will look up what they say about it because I, 
I was immediate. It's like fire truck red. One of you asked me about that once. They said, can you tell me which um, paint is absolutely fire truck red? Well, I would say this one is. And it says very intense. Yes, I can vouch for that. Semi-transparent. Yes. And warm red. Absolutely. It's darker and more yellowish than vermilion light. And it is because vermilion light is right here on the side. But this is an absolutely beautiful color. Um, I have used Scheveningen by Old Holland, Scheveningen Red. Um, there is a Scheveningen Red Deep, Scheveningen Red Light, and I think even a Scheveningen Red Medium. Um, and I found those to be the most beautiful red colors. But I have to say, Schminke, you've done it. I think um, I love this one much better. Um, and I will certainly be buying this one. Um, and then there is the Quinacridone Red Light, which is, of course, a beautiful color. I would have to compare it to the other colors to see how it compares to the other brands. But the Perilene Dark Red is also beautiful. But the Ruby Red Deep, to me, is, is like a really smashing color that would really fit well into my work. Um, then there is here the Saturn Red, which is actually an orange. Um, they call it satin red. It's kind of funny, isn't it, that uh, paint manufacturers sometimes give names to their paint that you wonder why do you call it that. Could have called it satin orange, perhaps, but maybe it's got to do with the pigment that's in it. I don't know how they uh, form their names. Um, but this is like um, the Dutch have uh, uh, flags during football matches and it's red with a white line in it. Well, uh, no red, sorry, orange. <laughs> and uh, well, this is about the best orange I could possibly conceive for, um, for that kind of uh, purpose. It's a beautiful, very intense orange. Um, then the, the transparent red deep is also a beautiful color. I think it comes close, it comes rather close to the ruby red deep. Let's see what they say about that. Three, four, six, three, four, six, and I have to see what they say. Cold, three, four, six, ruby red deep. They say dark, cold red, more light and bluish than dark red. And then there is transparent red deep. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, it, there is difference in color. Now that I, yeah, I think this is indeed more bluish. Sometimes it takes, you know, it's always lying flat for the camera when I film. What the colors that I really, really loved or love are the quinacridone magenta, though. <laughs> And the Perilene Violet and the Quinacridone Purple. Well, the Quinacridone Magenta and Quinacridone Purple, I'm going to order them ASEP because I absolutely love them. This Quinacridone Purple is like like velvet purple. It's, it's gorgeous. But the Perilene Violet is a color I would normally not buy because it's rather dark. It's like um, the, 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 the skin of an eggplant. It's, it's that dark. Um, but what I love about it is that it would make an absolutely great shading color. So this one I'm going to buy. Then there is the Cobalt Violet U, um, which is very intensely granulating. And I love it. I love the, 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 the cold purple color. Um, the Ftalo Sapphire Blue is, is absolutely wonderful with immensely great flow, as you would expect from any Ftalo color. Um, then there's the French Ultramarine. It's um, uh, it did come off very well from the from the dot when I was painting with it, but it ended up being a very intense color, and um, uh, with with great flow and some granulation. Then there's the Viridian. The Viridian is not very intense. It's it's rather um, light and transparent color, granulating but transparent. And then there is the uh, transparent green gold and I think it replaces the this color the yellow green 536 is now 537 and I didn't find the 536 in the uh, booklet anymore so I think that one's out 
um, which is okay because I still have uh, two or three pans of that lying about. Um, but I like this colour because it's even more um, yellowish and it would make, um, you know, when, when I see things like this, combining that, the transparent green gold with the quinacridone magenta and the quinacridone purple and uh, let's say the quinacridone red light, I mean that would be a party wouldn't it? Um, then there are some, some some browns, the spinel brown they call toffee brown and indeed it is like a fudge and it also um, has slightly a creamy consistency when you wet it. Then there is the, mar oops, the maroon brown which is also great, rather cool colour and transparent sienna, beautifully warm red brown and then there is a transparent ochre and that is a colour I like very much because I use ochre a lot and very often ochre is slightly opaque and um, I like the transparency of this for well backgrounds I sometimes use as landscapes. Then there is Mars Brown and I don't know if you can see that but um, it's granulating and it's got some um, in the granulation some darker areas in it and I like that very much. This would be the Mars Brown would be perfect for painting the bark of trees I think. Then there is the green umber, which is beautiful. It's it's a greyish, greenish, brownish. It's I think it's perfect for shading. Um, so this is a colour I'm going to buy for sure. Um, then there's transparent umber, which is just gorgeous. Mahogany brown. Um, I'm I was a little bit surprised that um, it does granulate and it the 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 brown didn't really flow into the wet area. Um, underneath the swatched area. Um, Perylene Green, another fantastic colour for shading, I'm sure. Um, at least, you know, that's every time I, sw I, I swatch a, a brand, I am always thinking of how I would apply a certain colour and I wouldn't buy them all. Like the Potter's Pink here, I can imagine if you're painting flowers and orchids, for example, I can imagine that this colour would really turn you on because it's a beautifully granulating colour. Um, however, it would never fit into my colour scheme. So, um, you know, I, w I don't get particularly enthusiastic about that, but it's just because it's not what I work with. Just like the Viridian, I never ever use Viridian. I don't know why, but you know, um, if you can point out one of my paintings or journal pages that has Viridian in them, you know, then I seriously <laughs> overlooked something because I, I actually when I buy a full set I always chuck out the Viridian. <laughs> I give it away to, to people. But you know the Perylene Green would be absolutely perfect for a lot of shading um, uh, applications. The Graphite Grey they say is very well with, uh, with pencil and do I remember that correctly? Let me look it up for you before I start talking nonsense. Graphite grey. Yes, particularly suitable for combination with pencil or for mixing. And um, I really love it because um, in watercolour we rarely use black. Um, I have a confession to make. I do use Luna Black by... By the way, if you think you're hearing strange noises... Hold on. Tibber, stop. It's my dog who felt he needed a washing <laughs> during my video. <laughs> but um, the Luna Black is um, a colour, is, is a black that I use and I use it only for its extremely granulating uh, capacity as you can see here um, even in the in the ceramic bowl it's, it's insane. Um, but I hardly ever use black as uh, a colour in my work. So then the graphite grey is a good alternative. The hematite black is actually a really dark warm grey in my humble opinion. Uh, and um, then there is Mars black and Mars black is just like um, the Daniel Smith Luna black. One calls it Luna, the other calls it Mars. <laughs> um, it's less granulating. Um, but it still is heavily granulating and um, I've heard, I, I recommended the Luna Black in my videos and I, ha I had some emails by people saying I don't like the Luna Black because it's just out of there, it's just not, it's not from this world and it really is otherworldly. 
I'm sorry, my dog is misbehaving. Um, it's really, um, you know, it's... <laughs> uh, the cat walked in and he felt he needed to, um, to scare it away. <laughs> um, but it's, um, I was saying that the Luna Black is uh, really, really granulating and I like it for its effects, but only in certain applications and I don't know how it'll how it'll go. Um, it may be that this will be my only tube that I'll be tired of it in a couple of months or, or years, but um, the Mars Black certainly is a, a black that I would keep turning to because it's, it's a little more natural and again, um, if you're doing underpaintings, um, often you do it in, in blue tones, but um, you can also, like if you're painting barks or stuff, then um, this black would be really great as uh, using lightly as an undertone, I think. <coughs> okay, and then of course there is a brilliant Opera Rose Day. Don't give any guarantees about light fastness. Well, I can guarantee you that it will, it will fade quickly and it won't look as bright. Um, I mean, just by looking at it, the color fades already. But then again, you know, this is just fun. This is like, I'm not even a girlish girl, but still every girl needs a little bit of pink. And I think every man's got a little girly side to him. And um, this pink is, is just, is one of the brightest opera pinks or opera roses I've ever, ever seen. And um, I love it. It just, just makes me happy seeing it. So, well. I'm dreadfully sorry. I couldn't. Sh I couldn't share with you my initial reaction from swatching. I will do so for the Sennelier. I will start swatching it this week, um, and um, I hope you like my video anyway. And if you do, then you can sign up to my channel for my. If you haven't done so already, for my. So you will automatically be notified of my new videos. And um, I hope I didn't um, too much for those that were annoyed by it and enough for those who liked it. <laughs> and um, well, let's, uh, uh, here I go again. Um, you'll see me again in a new video very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.